we are live. I was staring at nothing. So anyways, thank you for joining guys. Uh, man, this is fun. Uh, I, this is my third podcast in 24 hours, which is extremely rare. But thank you for being here. For all of you that are here, uh, we are live on YouTube, Twitch, X, uh, and also on Rumble. I will upload later on Spotify. And uh, we didn't do Instagram today because it's a little bit uh, challenging still to get a good feed on Instagram. But I just want to say thank you for those of you that are tuning in. I got a very special treat for you guys today. Before we get to that, let's pay some bills. Today's sponsor is W Energy Drinks, W.GG. If you are in need of an alternative to spending, I spend, I'm not even kidding you because we're doing taxes already. $3,000 I spent minimum this year just on Red Bull. So I switched over to W energy drinks they actually reached out to me on instagram it's one of those ads well anyways if you go to w.gg they have these energy drinks that are uh zero dyes zero artificial ingredient stuff like dot what do you call that food coloring um no fillers no maltodextrin so anybody that's in the nutritional industry or or um whatever like health industry you know that you don't want maltodextrin those kind of things uh, but they have really cool flavors i'm drinking the app the dub sludge that's the name of the flavor so if, if that's interest of interest to you i'm stuttering today but go to w.gg get yourself uh man get yourself like a tub of w energy drinks they have that as well as hydration formulas and if you do my promo code is glo 808 you'll get 10 percent off your entire order and they ship legit quick so if you haven't seen my videos scroll through you'll see it so anyways thank you for watching that corny uh little ad but Guys, today I have a very special guest, and I'm just, I'm really blessed, um, honored, blessed. Uh, I don't have enough words, I think, in the language to describe when I have a guest of this level. And I, I'm not puffing him up to, like, give false praise, but I am honored and blessed to have this gentleman here with us today. Uh, his username is in the title. Uh, he is a former Marine. Well, once a Marine, always a Marine, but... That's part of his title. If you look at him on social media, that alone really blesses me to know that we're able to do what we're doing right now because of people like him who fought for our freedom to be able to enjoy podcasts and do things like this. So, of course, he's a family man, uh, three kids, beautiful wife. And we'll talk about that in the broadcast. But we're going to get a chance to know him. We're obviously going to talk God, politics, family. Uh, we're going to talk social media, obviously, since we're here on X, we're on all social platforms. And just, you know, if you got a pen and paper handy, you might want to take some notes because I think we're going to learn something today. So family, thank you for being here. In about 30 seconds, you're going to meet a very dear friend of mine, Brother Carlos T. In about 30 seconds, stay tuned. stutter yeah I, I struggled to get through that intro <laughs> man i was telling you that right. rush from the w ah, not yet you know what it is um i don't normally do three podcasts in consecutive i did one last night one this morning i was a guest and then today so uh it, it's good though i i will take it as they come because it's hard to get people to commit all the time especially end of the year so i appreciate you coming on brother i, I really do thank you it's my pleasure. I, and by the way, the background is that like a uh, just a super clean wall? What, what the heck is that? It's really nice back there, man. It, it's our wall, and, and believe it or not, my wife painted it uh, recently. I, today, actually, she painted it today. Really? Because okay. she she painted it a month ago, and our kids oh. just just a marker and some pens, and they went to town all over the room. So she covered up their Picassos. She she was like, you you gotta you gotta make a good impression on that on that show tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, uh I gotta pop this up. 
And uh, I, of course, I asked you earlier if anything's private. So this is something I want to show. What is her name? I, I forgot her name. Nala. 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 Yeah. It, it, what language is Nala? Is that Spanish? It's, it's the Lion King. I'm Nala. not oh. sure what it is, but that's, yeah. And I, I actually did read part of that story where she kind of walked you through some stuff. And even your sister, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I I got her when she was uh, eight weeks old and I was still in high school at the time. And then after high school, I went through a rough breakup and, and just just life happened. And I had her and then she was there with me. Uh, I was spending a lot of time uh, walking her, just just, you know, spending time with my dog. And it, I was trying to be lonely, just just wanted to keep to myself working and stuff. And then uh, the, the, something similar happened with my sister. I was in the military and she had her and she went through some personal stuff. And it was the dog that was there with her like the whole time. I, I love dogs. And if anybody doesn't know, I got two bulldogs. And I think these, this is, a, is that a golden retriever? It is, yeah. Yeah, they're super smart dogs. Like, really smart like teaching them how to do things like my dogs yeah they don't want to do tricks they, they just want to run around and play but so, yeah i have a i have a boy now a younger one and oh really my, my, because my sister lives with nala so we have another one named leo nice i, I you know it's funny how they know and i obviously we're not going to do a show about dogs but we got to talk about dogs but like it's funny <laughs> it's funny how they know like you, like my dogs know when we're in stressed, mm -hmm. when they pick up on it and they begin to growl, like as if they're, they're going to come out there and protect us. You know, we got two girls, two both, and they sound, they sound vicious. When they start growling, I feel sorry for whoever enters my home. Like I really do. Cause I can't, I won't be able to stop them. You know, if, if they, if anybody poses a threat to my kids, I'm, I'm sorry, brother. Like I, I, I can't even pull them off each other. So yeah, well, I want to ask. Yeah, I gotta ask this one. <laughs> what, what the heck, bro? <laughs> so my wife did a photo shoot, uh, and that was in the beginning when she first started uh, taking up photography, and now she's doing it professionally. But this was one of her uh, a few, a couple months into her uh, photography journey. We went to the beach and and she just went to town and I started I started posing with for, with my truck. Now that's a tundra, right? No, what is that? It is. Yeah, it is. It is. That's before they went to the twin turbo V six. Yeah, that's the V eight. V eight. Yeah, don't sell it. No, it's don't. gone. Oh. But I'm, 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 it's been it's been over a year since I got rid of it, but I'm gonna get another one. The, the Twin Turbo V6s are nice, but that V8, you can't beat that V8. The V8 is a, a 5.7, 5 I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to cycle nice. through a couple photos. This is a. Uh... <laughs> That's my grandparents. Oh, your grandparents. Okay. Yep. They just uh, just celebrated their 54th Fourth? Yeah, anniversary. And they, they they've been they were a great example for me growing up. I, I I lived with them for a while. They look really happy in this picture. It's surprising. My grandpa does not like pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah my grandma's all about it, but my grandpa no. He's he's like uh, no. <laughs> he's he's gangster, bro. I'm just telling you, he looks gangster. Like <laughs> shirt and yeah. <laughs> He's a, he's funny. He's funny. He has his his moments. He he likes to crack jokes and yeah, it, he's a blast. This one is of course. Now, how old are your kids now? I know this picture. I have a five year old. My my second turns four next month, and then I have a two year old, and then we have we have the one on the way. What? I didn't know that. Yeah. No way. What the yeah, heck? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, that's awesome. <laughs> Yo, I just lit up, brother. Hey, bro, let me. But I, I wish it was in the same room. But you know how crazy that awesome that is to have four kids, bro. That's. Well, we're, yeah, I th that was the compromise in the beginning. My wife and I, when we were dating, we talked about it, and I wanted five. She want she she was willing to have three, 
but we came down and we met in the middle at four but we were we were almost done at three and we were like okay we're i'm, I'm satisfied we're good and then we we got the the news recently and we're blessed and we're excited for the fourth one i always tell people especially th this young generation that it's okay to plan for you know the career and setting yourself up but for for couples like us we're not supposed to have kids you know and when my wife had that surgery where they removed what whatever was important and they told us we can't have kids that devastated us you know and we look back now that we have four kids we adopted our first one uh, who is still family and now we have four total Man, I would never want to put a timeline on having because you just never know when your womb will be open, when you're gonna have another one. You just never know. And uh, man, they're a blessing, man. I'm so excited for you, but legit, bro. Seriously, I appreciate that. We're excited as well. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know if it's gonna be a boy or a girl. We could find out right now, but we're kind of teetering <laughs> the line whether we want to find out or not, or just be surprised. Did you know the other three beforehand? Or yeah, we found out all of them, all boys. What are you guys hoping for a girl or all all boys? My wife is hoping for a girl. Of course, I'm, little, I, I, I'm scared of a girl, but I, I, I'm I'm gonna be happy with whatever it is. Let me tell you, I bef I was always terrified of touching babies, like before I met my wife. And so when I first met my wife, and we were dating, she said, "Come with me to the hospital. I gotta go um help my." whoever her cousin so we went to the hospital we went into a delivery room it's straight right like right after the baby's deliver she's and i'm i'm paraphrasing but she she grabs this squiggly like squiggly i can't find the right words like squirmy little baby and goes here and i'm like my heart is pounding and i'm like what the heck <laughs> i'm kidding a brand new baby like straight out of the womb and I looked at this baby and my heart just melted and my heart was pounding. It wasn't even mine, but it's the weirdest experience ever. Right, right at delivery. I'm not even exaggerating. Um, the eyes were gray. And fast forward to 2023, um, that baby that I held was the very baby that we would end up adopting five years after that. I didn't even know yeah. at that time what it was. Uh, she was a drug baby. And so my wife came to went to go support. We went to go support. I didn't know the whole story. And uh it's powerful, man. Just holding a, a brand new baby. It's it's you know, it's like I don't know how we went so sideways on on holding babies, but uh oh <laughs> I know I know now I know I was gonna say girls. So I was always uh I, I didn't want boys because I told my wife, I am not taking my boys to the bathroom because they're gonna drop their baby. <laughs> On the, on the urinal, they're going to slap the, we say bottle, they're going to slap the bottle on the urinal and like, I'm going to freak out. No. <laughs> and she says, and she's like, I don't want girls. So we both wanted the opposite sex for babies. Oh, we, man. So, not, so we got two and two, right? Okay. Good balance. My, well, my first experience with boys, man, one of them, you, you ever had the teepees? You remember the teepees? Did, did you uh, so when you change the diaper as as a newborn they have these little uh, these little gifts you can buy for your friends and it's a little teepee you put over their their, their pee pee mm. and it keeps the the sheet the your the the i don't know what i i say she she their the urine from shooting up into the sky when they're when you're changing them you mean change them and one well, day I, go ahead go ahead no go ahead tell me no i was gonna say i gotta brag that yeah. I've never had them pee on my, on me. Three boys. Oh my gosh! And I, I'm a pro. I can I can change a diaper just like no other. Dude, you and my wife get along just fine. I'm gonna tell you. So my, I put the teepee on my son, and he's screaming, and I'm stressing out because I'm not good at changing diapers. Like, bro, it's crazy. I, I use like 30 wipes just to do one change, and so my son, his his when he started to go about make shishi, it shot the teepee off. And the thing went straight up into the sky and right into my eardrum. And I was freaking out. <laughs> and I was like, Han, help, help, honey, help. And she's like, what? Oh, my God, Gregory, it's just, just do it. And she, 
spot. My wife, she's she's in the room next to her. She's like, yeah, that's my husband. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. No, that was, I was bad oh, with boys. But man. man. They're a blast. They're a blast. Oh, I, I, I'm legit excited for you, man. Like, for real. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Well, let's let's put up your queen so everybody can see for those that don't know. No. <laughs> That's a good photo, bro. Thank you. We that was uh a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's we, recent. Yeah, we don't we don't get to go out much as a couple because we 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 live away from family and we we it's it's hard to trust people and we just you know, we, we we've gotten caught up with the business and everything. So so this time my 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 sister was in town. My my wife asked her if she could watch the kids. She lives she lives only about 2 hours away. And she came up and she watched them for the night. She, all she had to do was put them now, put brush her teeth and put them down for bedtime. And we were able to enjoy a, a night as a couple. And it was a, it was a great time. Man, you gotta have, you definitely gotta have date nights. And I, I know it's yeah. hard. Yeah. That's something yeah. I want to prioritize 2024. It, it, it is hard. And I, I, I totally understand like here. Cause so for those, if you don't know my story, technically, all of my, still my taxes, I pay taxes as a Hawaii resident, but I am in Oregon. And so the whole reason we're here is to help take care of my brother who had mm-hmm. um, quite a bit of medical issues. And so, you know, we're fortunate to, you know, to be here and also still go back and forth and do ministry in Hawaii. But um, we don't have the same family here to, you know, if our kids needed someone to walk or be with them and i totally understand that like it's yeah. hard you can't just trust anybody with your kids right yeah it's, yeah yeah it's hard it's hard i i even have a hard time with family i mean not that i don't trust them it's just they're my babies you know yeah no I, I'm, I'm i'm the same way yeah i'm 100 percent the same way i i will not leave them um this is just me personally uh i know I just, I won't let them spend the night somewhere where I'm not with them or my wife is with them. Like I, I can't have, well, I'm, I'm not open to it yet to, for them to just go spend the night. Uh, like with, if we've had uh, grandparents ask if they could take them to like Disney and things like that or something. Yeah. And that's just not something I'm comfortable with. Let's talk about that. Let's, okay. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm the same. Um, and it's not a trust issue, at least I mean, and some people may disagree. I think for me, it's more of, it's my job. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I actually had a, a, a guest, um, family. She was a clinical psychologist. She was one, one of my guests on my podcast. And we talked about, um, I don't know what number I'm going to throw a fake number, but like 80% of abuse whether it's physical, sexual, mental, or are usually with people that are trusted people. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because, and it's not, and I'm careful how I say that because people get hurt feelings, but yeah, it's when uncle or cousin, you know, we don't know what they're, what they're struggling with. We really don't. Yeah. And let's be real. You and I are guys. Like we, we know exactly what guys look at. We know what guys struggle with. You know, and so mm-hmm. given the the wrong time or place, man, I, God forbid something happens, you know, to where yeah. we, yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, I find it interesting because I, I grew up in a way, a little bit the, the opposite way, but I guess, I mean, times have changed. And, and also I grew up more with, with my family was really close knit. Like I used to go spend the night at my aunt's all the time, or I used to go to my great grandma's house and spend the night. And, and I mean, I always felt safe and everything. And it was, it was a great time. And, but now I don't know. And I, now that I have kids, I, I see it differently. And it's, it's also, we live far away from everybody. So it's been, I have, I haven't had to entrust them into somebody else's care. So we're blessed for that, by the way, I, I'm grateful that we get to raise our own kids and, and we get to, instill the values that we want to instill in them and and just raise them how we want to raise them are, are they at home with you guys or do they go to like daycare or school my my oldest is in kindergarten my yeah, right. second will start pre-k next year 
And okay. my youngest, he's he's a he's, he'll be at home for a couple of years. Okay. Now, do you think your military background had an effect as far as the parenting, like, like what we were just talking about? Do you think that had any? Uh, not really. No, not really. How not many really. years? How many years were you in? I served uh, four years. So four years. I did. I, I did one one contract, and and then once my time was over, I I separated. Well, you protect the American dream, and now you're living it. So, <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I I don't even know what got like what got me to join in the first place, but man, it was it was a blast, and it was an honor. And it was it was it was my pleasure. I I truly enjoyed it. The friendships that you make, the experiences, the values, the 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 lessons that you learn, it, you know, and the benefits that you get afterwards. You, you everything just adds up, and and everything is a blessing. Well, you can co- you can go to Hawaii and stay at the Halikoa Hotel for a very good rate. You just got to reserve it a year in advance. Okay. Super okay. well. Actually, you're in a tropical place already, so you don't really need to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they have a beautiful hotel in Waikiki, though. That for military personnel. Okay. Yeah, super good rates, and like they they really take care of you guys, like for real. Yeah. That's awesome. So where did you start? Like, did you go overseas? Or where did you go? Yeah, I uh, I did my basic training in South Carolina, Paris Island. And okay. then I did my training for my job at in North Carolina. And then right after that, I got orders to to do a, a tour in, in Okinawa. Okinawa. So I was I was in Okinawa for two years. That was it was it was a good that's where my wife and I got married actually. Really? Yeah. So she came out there for nine days. We got married uh through their uh civil civilly through the court yeah and then it was like a marriage slash honeymoon at the same time <laughs> you gotta tell us that story i'm gonna put you on a job i'm gonna put you on a full screen but you gotta tell us walk us through that whole whatever you can share with that two years and then meeting your wife in okinawa dude that's a cool place bro oh it's amazing so we actually met in high school and we we had one class together we became good friends but uh at that time, we both had a boyfriend, a different boyfriend, different girlfriends, and we were just good friends. We we had a class together, and then we graduated. We were in our own separate ways, and then we um, had friends together, the mutual friends that we hung out with uh, right after high school. But then I joined, and then I went away, and we lost touch. And then while I was in Japan, we reconnected um, through Snapchat, I think it was. And we just had conversations. We we would uh, just talk, see what's going on. She served in the Army as well. So she could relate a little bit to what I was going through and being away from family and everything. And so one, I, came up, I came on leave back home to the States from Okinawa for a, a couple of weeks. And we linked up. And... It was it was just a good time. We 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 clicked. We got along very well. Uh, we had fun together, and so we decided to keep in touch and become something more, be more serious. And then three months after that, I flew her out there and we got married. It didn't take long. I mean, we I had known her for a few years, and then just I I had no doubt in my mind that this girl she was. She was wifey material, and she was the one for me. Now, where is she from? So she was born here in the okay. U.S., but but she's from uh, her family's from El Salvador. El Salvador, yeah. So where is that in really? Right, now, are you from Colombia or are you from yeah. the United States? Okay, okay. Yeah, I was born in Colombia. So, how does that work with like military service? Uh, like were you how did that work was there any issue with you joining the military if you were born so, so i couldn't join until i had my my green card okay i had a i had a work permit but that was that wasn't enough my work per- permit wasn't enough so then my 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 papers came through uh, we got approved we went through 
all the legal stuff. And then as the day, I think the day I got my green card, I went to the recruiter's office and, and I said, sign me up. And right after that, and then the, 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 one of the great things of serving while you have your green card is that you get your citizenship. I actually got my citizenship while I was at boot camp. I took, I took the test at boot camp and then I got my, my certificate at boot camp. Was that because you served? Is that like an instant? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. They should yeah, make- I, I had no idea until like I was going through the process and he was like, Oh yeah. And, and then this is going to happen. I was like, well, would you look at that? Cause if not, I would have had to wait. Like, I think it's like five years. You have to hold your green card for five years and then you can apply for uh, citizenship. It's like a movie. Like we should make all, uh, <laughs> People that cross the border join the military if they want instant citizenship. Okay. It's a good trade off. I mean, that's an idea. Just don't die. <laughs> don't, don't, don't die because, uh, don't, but did you die? Or, or don't commit uh, treason or something. Oh, that's, you know? yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. that's not a good idea. <laughs> that's not a good idea. <laughs> that's a stupid idea, Greg. Oh my gosh. Hey, I, just, I got a lot of bullets in my gun. So I, they're not, they're not going to, you know, not all of them are going to stick, but, uh, you were saying Snapchat earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. I, yeah. How do you connect with people? Like, I thought Snapchat was all we were friends. We were already oh. friends. Yeah, so it was it was simple, and we had a thing where we just kept the streak going with each other. Yeah, yeah. It was it was just random stuff like, hey, good morning. It was like you know, I think we got to like over a hundred days at one point of just wow. every day just messaging each other. That's cool. I, I, the, man, you know, Snapchat is for me, like, I think two or three times a year, I'll jump on it if I need a good laugh. I don't uh, have it anymore. Other than that, I don't jump on it. Yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I deleted it. I haven't used it in phew, like five, no, like more than that, probably like six years. Well, it, I think it served, its, it served its purpose, right? So, yeah, uh, it, it can be retired at this point. Yeah. I got to say this. Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, and without being corny, like for what you did for our country, but I don't think people understand how hard it is to be a Marine. Like I, I, I never been, so I can't say it from experience, but my last guest uh, who was a Marine prior to you, mm-hmm. um, he was in, uh, force recon or yeah, force mm-hmm. recon. So that's yeah. even a, another, you know, all, all Marines are elite no matter what they do but i do know that the success rate even the force recon is is not that great like when they enter the the school it's not that he was telling me is most of them fail yeah Uh, not fail as a as a human being but just the program it's so tough Yeah, yeah, yeah um but just to be a marine in itself i think there's there's less than i think he told me now there's less than 200,000 worldwide active active duty or that's a, that that sounds accurate you right? know how yeah. crazy that is bro that means yeah. you're, you're like you're not even one percent of the population you're right. like a half yeah. of a half of a percent if even that yeah and, uh, I, I never thought about it like that but yeah so it's, it's probably like what the third smallest branch and, and then well now you have the space force and <laughs> and now you have and then the, the coast guard is there I, i'm not sure how many how much personnel the coast guard has well, we're, we're grateful for all branches, but we all know uh, uh, living in Hawaii, <laughs> I, I seen those guys do PT and I'm like, oh my oh, God. Oh, that's right. Yep. yep. Dude, like I'm not <clears throat> casting shade, but the Navy that I always seen, bro, those, I don't know how they would pass. I don't know how they passed their, um, their fitness tests. Like, you know, uh, my, si- my sister was in the Navy and I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw some shade at her right now. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she failed her PT test. And she had to like redo it. I think I think it was only one time. And so while while she was there, she had to she had to get get it together and 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 pass that test. And I was like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> I gave her a hard time about it, but we haven't <laughs> talked about it since. Brother Sean from X, what's up, my brother? And we got Tala who is on X as well. I love the fact that we can see comments now. Before they they took out the comments and, but. Here's a, here's an honest question. This is a very serious question. 
I think the reason why the Marines have such an advantage over other branches in the physical aspect um, is the shorts, bro. Like, what the heck, bro? It's 2023 and they're still wearing Daisy Dukes, bro. What the heck is up with that? I got to ask you that question. And do you still wear them? That's that's the next question. I don't I don't wear them anymore. Hey, but... this picture is pretty borderline. Let me just pop this up for people that came in late. This is pretty close, bro. I mean, it's it's not quite there, but I mean, look at that. It's getting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're probably the same. I'm not probably a little longer, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are those are a, to- a token of pride in the Marine Corps. Yeah. I mean, you, every Fourth of July, every Veterans Day, uh, we'd we'd see Marines. They put them on. It would not even PT. It was the weekend or something, and you'd see them wearing them with their boots and an American shirt. And you know they'd be cr- cranking back beers or something because it was it was just celebrating the holidays. So you, you see stuff like that pretty often when you're in the barracks. Well, I I'm gonna catch it on my friend Edwin Moreno. Out there in South Carolina, brought a ditch the shorts, bro. You've been out of the yeah. Marine Corps for ten <laughs> years now. Wear some knee knee length shorts, my brother. Like, but he's wearing my own. <laughs> and of course, he wears his long white socks that go up to mid mid calf. I'm like, bro, come on. <laughs> but uh, on a serious note, we're, man, I will say it, we're grateful, and you guys are literally less than one percent. <laughs> you know the population. You know. We got to talk before we get into, I want to talk politics because uh, I love your um, your prophetic mm-hmm. declarations and uh, I'm going to give you pushback on that. Just let you know, because I, I don't like them, but I do like them. It's one of those weird things. But before we go into that, uh, on your profile, you have uh, obviously God fearing. Uh, are you a Christian? Are you Catholic? I am Christian. OK, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Nice. And how long now would you say? Uh, my whole life. Your whole life. I, I grew up, yeah, in a Christian household. And and I, I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Because if it if it wasn't for that, I honestly don't know what I'd be dealing with today because of everything we went through as a family, whether it was uh, domestic violence and stuff like that and, and moving countries and and just the loneliness and all that. If it wasn't for my faith and for my upbringing, and knowing that who God is, I I don't I don't think I think the outcome might have been differently as far as like how how resilient I am. So my my faith has made me a very very resilient person. I I don't stress over hardly anything. Like anything can be thrown my way, and I I'm I'm pretty level headed. And I know where my my strength comes from. If you wanna, if you wanna say that, I, Amen. I, I'm, hey. I'm pretty confident in that. Amen to that. You know, especially in today's generation, there's a lot of. And to all my ex family, uh, we're not. I'm not casting shade at you by any means, but there is a lot of talk and discussion that would appear uh, the right things to say, um, but as a believer in god and believer in the word and there's a lot of things that are being discussed that if you're not careful if you're not rooted in the word of god you're going to be pulled and and strayed to doctrine that may not be healthy for you or your family uh and a lot of people well as long as i you know just look within myself you know and there's a lot of popular words out there like self-help or self-help self-care and i get all that i I appreciate that but i I share with dr he today at the end of the day the center of focus of everything in in, in my life and my wife's life is not like it's not a numerical order like god first wife second kids third job and all that there's only one number you know and it's him everything you know it's centered around him and everything that we do should pull in alignment to what he wants for our life and so but yeah i i do appreciate you being very upfront with that like on your profile and even on your um your post um that's a good landing spot but we're going to jump over to desantis let's talk about him for a second (laughs) tell me why why is he going to win well, I, if you take a look at everything he's done in Florida, it, 
if you if you take a look at everything that's happening in Iowa and where the country is and where the country is headed, he is a guy that has shown great leadership throughout his his years as an elected official. He has he spent time in Congress and he's been the uh, governor of Florida for five years now. And the whole what really opened my eyes to politics a little bit more, I guess, was the COVID. And I think that was a turning point for a lot of people. And moving to Florida pretty much in the middle of it because we moved here in 2020. And then experiencing the the difference from what you were seeing on the news and experiencing what was going on here in Florida, which was we were just business as usual. Everything was opened up. Every I didn't I was working normally. Um, and then so I see that I see that, that that he took one approach to start with. He followed the path that everybody else was following, which was let's shut it down. Let's figure out what this is. And he was one of the first one, or if not the first one, to open up the state and say, you know, we got to keep this going. I don't know how many people lost their businesses because because they had to be shut down for a long period of time. I don't know how many kids were affected because mentally being stuck at home just wasn't healthy for them. And then you look at uh, the stuff he's done. For me, uh, the the bill uh, that he just signed. Uh, HB1, for, right? Well, that's, the, that's one for school choice for my okay. child. Child is in school because of that in a private school, but also the um, the heartbeat bill, which was six weeks, he signed mm-hmm. that. And for me, uh, I'm pro life, and that's that's a huge thing for me as well. And then you look at the economy; he paid down uh, state debt. I think that debt per per citizen of the state is like six hundred and sixty one dollars, and that's like low compared to other states. Um, education, I think the state ranks number one. Um, the economy is pretty good, no state taxes, but that wasn't him. But I'm just saying, like, those are some of the benefits of being here in Florida. He he just showed great leadership. And then when I join spaces about DeSantis and I hear people on the ground in Iowa, he's gotten the most support from that state. So that's why I've been doing it for 45 days. No, it's I started on the 45th day, counting down. So I've been doing it for about 29 at this point. And I've been posting the, 45 days until DeSantis wins Iowa and then 44, 43. And I've been pretty consistent with that daily because, because I truly believe it. Uh, Just hearing the people on the ground, seeing the support that he's gotten from uh, state representatives and the governor. I just, I just believe I'm confident that he's going to win Iowa. I do have a ton of respect for him because of the pandemic. He treated people like adults. Yeah. And not children. Um, Hawaii was the very last state to open up. Yeah. And it's so ironic that they're the 50th state in the union. They're, they literally are the, <laughs> they're literally the last state to open up. I think Hawaii had the worst hit of all the states economy wise in terms of small business. Uh, I talked about it uh, the other day, I think with Tala, I think it was Tala. Yeah. With Tala, uh, how Costco, Sam's, all your major stores were allowed to stay open because they were deemed essential. Well, mm-hmm. my friend Stephen Parker, who owned the general store in Kailua, Oahu, which is a small mom and pop store, he couldn't stay open. Mm-hmm. But he offered the same products and services. And governmentally, that governor is straight up evil. Uh, I actually protested in front of his house with bullhorns. I actually broadcasted it live here on X. Bullhorns and everything. I'll 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 do the um. I'll, I'll retweet it or repost it. Okay. So with DeSantis, I I respect <clears throat> that a ton of what he did. Um, the other thing, for sure, obviously, the pro, I'm pro life as well. Um, and then the whole his desire to treat people like responsible adults and let them make their own decisions. Uh, I, I lose respect for government officials that think that they can tell us what to do. Like it's their place to raise our kids. It's their place to tell us how to operate our business. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't have respect for politicians that that's their, that's their motive. And Hawaii is one of those. And I, I feel like even I go to Portland, it, I'm not sure if you've ever been to Portland or even San yes, Francisco. I have, I almost, I almost moved there. It's Believe crazy. 
I visited it and I almost moved there. How Gresham. recent? I, I almost moved oh, to Gresham. Gresham. That's mm -hmm. so. That's where my brother's at. He's at a care facility okay. in Gresham. Yeah. Oh, okay. Before I remind me to come back to Gresham. Um, okay. But Portland, it, I felt like it just didn't make sense. You know, like I'm driving through there at night, daytime, and I feel like they purposely tank the city. Like they purposely let the city go. It, it, because it makes no sense. Like, how can you let a city get that bad? I actually drove through it at night because yeah. we want we were there it was 2020 and we wanted to see what was taking place and yeah streets were blocked off you had like fires in the middle of the road um people protesting people yelling people it was it was crazy i hadn't seen anything like that in in anywhere i've lived I'll tell you the story about Gresham. So my brother has been in Gresham for almost actually two years now. Um, he, has, he has a brain injury. Careful. So I go there every week or every other week, and I'll spend four or five days with him to come back home, and me and my dad take turns alternating. There is this place in Gresham that I always eat, um, pho. I love pho is my, my new thing now. My, my wife loves it. Oh, man. I, so, so do I. So do I. Yeah, I, I love it. And there's a place in Gresham that I go, and – for some reason, I went there later than I normally do. And the place that makes the fall is also a bar. But there's also a bar next door. So after I eat, I'm sitting in my car. These two bike groups come up. And I just had a weird feeling. And and I posted about this on Twitter, on X, by the way. I didn't uh, explain the details. I just posted what I saw. But people are yelling. And... I seen these two guys single out from the crowd and everybody's yelling. And I just, I already had this feeling, man, I shouldn't be here. And sure enough, these guys are, they're, they're clenched. They're in a clinch and they're, they're, they're kind of like wrestling. And then I hear the yelling get louder. The guy reaches into his pocket or in his pants, pulls out a pistol. They both fall to the ground and it's right in front of my car. And all I hear is, and I'm sitting there and everybody is like scattering. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's about, I would say 15 feet from my car. And I'm not licensed to carry an organ. So I'm sitting there with a, with a Bowie knife or the Rambo knife in my car. Like, what's that going to do? And I'm thinking, so if my first instinct is to crouch down, like as if that's going to do anything really, I mean, you know, <laughs> cause you got more training than I do, but that's just a natural instinct is to duck. And I'm still watching. And just pe people are scattering. There's a few that come in and they surround the, the two guys. As soon as I get an opening, I'm out of there. You know, I like I got out, went straight to the hospital where my brother's at, just parked there. I called my wife. I told her what happened. And then I thought about it like, you know, I said, wow, what if it was different? What if it happened differently? Mm hmm. You know, it, it was right in front of me in Gresham where you were thinking about moving. And then some other thoughts came in like, well, should I should I notify the law enforcement? Um, and part of my fatherly part or instinct for me was like, OK, well, I don't know who these these two groups are. I don't know the whole story. And I'm still and I'm telling you, I'm being transparent with you. I, I really don't know if I should. I did every day look at the they have like this police blogger and there was no request made to for anybody that has any, you know, any information come forward. So there's nothing like that. But what I do know from before the shooting was that there are two groups that came in. There was a disagreement, those two guys, and the majority of everybody scattered and they got on their motorcycles and everybody just dug out. And there was a handful that stayed. And I don't know if they grabbed the gun because I was out of that at that point, but. That's in the Portland, greater metro Gresham area. That's. Yeah. Man. Uh, you know, I, I, the, the, the sad, not sad thing, but the concerning thing for me is that I wasn't scared or I didn't have anxiety. At least I don't think I did. But my heart was broken. I told my wife this. I said, my heart is broken for this city. Yeah. That it's, it's come to this. These guys had a disagreement. What, whatever the disagreement is. It's such a beautiful state. Such a beautiful state. Yeah.
and it's like you know i've i've gotten pistols i've done pistol safety courses i've done firing ranges i know what it sounds like i know what it feels like but that's the first time i ever seen someone open fire on someone mm-hmm. and it felt it felt terrible they felt different it didn't feel you know even when i fire a, a, a handgun if it feels good you, you know it's, it's a it's a good shoot when you when you hit the target it's like but to see it on a human being man it was it was, it was surreal you know yeah have you ever seen anything like that in your years of service no the thankfully i didn't but um i have seen the just the outcome because yeah. i grew up in colombia and it's it's a lot it's less safer than it is here and you do tend to see things of like robberies and and i saw a man that had been shot and i saw him he was he had already passed so that's something that i experienced at a very young age i was i was very young and so that that's been that's stuck with me forever and that's in here like do, do those yeah. images ever pop up like at random times when I think about it, just yeah. when I think about it, I just I see how the guy looked. What was like? I didn't see it happen, but I, I think I missed it by a few seconds because I got there and and it was already people were starting to surround the car and you know call the authorities. But yeah, that's the that's the only thing I can really think of of, of something that uh, that extreme, I guess, if you want to say. So when did you actually leave Colombia? Uh, I was I was one month shy of turning 13 years old, so I was a teenager. Wow, yeah, and big do shock. You go, do you go back often? Uh, I've been twice. I've been twice. Yeah, I took my wife and my kids for the first time, and they got to meet everybody uh, last year. Actually, we went for my cousin's wedding, and then it was it was a great time. It's be- I would tell you this. It's beautiful. I saw this. Yeah. It's obviously a tourist video, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's beautiful. My gosh, the yeah. beaches, the the jungles, the the hummingbirds, bra, the hummingbirds is legit. Yeah. And not not to brag, but Colombia is like the third most beautiful country in the world. No brag. It's ranked, it's, it's ranked the yeah the third. It's got everything. It's got the the jungle, like you said. It's got beaches. It's got mountaintops it's got it gets snow in certain areas it, it's got everything so they're third so I, I guess hawaii will be number two yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got all that we got maybe, snow maybe, too. maybe maybe no you know what i'll give it a two because we got the safety and security of the united states so there we go okay we got number okay. two spot <laughs> yeah yeah plus we got the marine corps base right there yeah yeah I had, a, I had a friend station over there. That's a good gig. If you ever get uh, Oahu, that's a good gig. Oh, I'm not sure if it's better than Okinawa. You know, Okinawa is a beautiful place, I'm sure. Yeah. When we were there, actually, for those nine days, yeah, my wife and I would be driving down the road and she'd be, I'd be like, let's turn left here. And we just turned to a random street. We'd, we'd get lost daily. Just taking, we found some beautiful beaches that way. We found some. Some great restaurants that way. Um, and it, it was a good time. So with the two years in Okinawa, did, did that improve your palate like for foods, like eating raw foods? Did it? I wasn't eating all that back then. No, I was wasn't. eating sushi. I was yeah, yeah. I was trying the raw stuff, but I wasn't like a whole lot. I was having ramen, uh, obviously sushi. Um uh right like uh fried rice things like that it was and and they'd bring you the rice the bowl of rice and it, it'd be sizzling because it was so hot and you have to mix the the egg in yeah because it's, it's raw in there oh man it was amazing you put the soy sauce at the top and mix it yeah but that that i i wouldn't even probably i probably wouldn't even eat that today if i went because i, I changed my whole eating habits yeah yeah well, let's get back to uh, DeSantis. So, what what is it about Iowa? I, I meant to ask, what is it about Iowa and DeSantis? Like, why why Iowa? So, Iowa is the first state that is gonna, I guess, elect or the, uh, who the who they want the 
the the candidate for the general to be and it's, it, they do a caucus and from my understanding i'm no political geek <laughs> from my understanding is is very personal it's very like people gather people discuss people engage people you know i think people talk to each other about hey this is why you should vote for this guy or the and they just it's very very um personal so that's 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 the first one to go down and i think like a week later it's going to be new hampshire i think that one is regular just elections but iowa is important because it's it, it's it's going to get the snowball rolling so if he can win iowa it's gonna it's gonna change the whole narrative set that, the tone right that set the tone and change the narrative because the narrative right now is that trump is inevitable that the, he's leading the polls by 30, 40 points. So when he wins Iowa, it's going to show that there were some flaws there and something was going on. And and I think it's going to uh, ga- garner some momentum. Now, are you registered as a Republican with the RNC or the Republican uh, Party? I, I am here in Florida because uh, if not, I wouldn't be able to vote in the right. primary. It's, okay. a, it's a close, close election state. But I, when people ask me, I don't even, I don't even identify as a Republican. I just, you know, I'm a, I'm a conservative, I guess, if you want to say it. But I'm, a, I'm, I'm a Christian. One's first, yeah, and foremost. <laughs> F- so funny story. We in 2016, we had a team of pastors and leaders that we, so we were, we were heavily involved with the government in Hawaii from 2010 all the throughout the years and. Anyways, our team of leaders that were, we were all kind of walking together politically and who to pray for, what candidates, and our, our, our good friends, um, they told us, oh, make sure you vote for Ted Cruz. And I'm like, no, we're not voting for Ted Cruz. And uh, our friends were like, they were flabbergasted. They're like, how how can you not vote for? And then they, then they go, well, who are you voting for? And so I said, well, we felt led at this time, this is who we're going to vote for. And it was Donald Trump. And they were just, we had to peel them off the ceiling. And I'm like, there's just something about Ted Cruz that when we prayed about it, there's something about his finances I didn't like. There's something about where his money is coming from. It didn't look right. Hmm. And I said, well, what do you think about you know Trump? And I said, well, look, we're not voting Trump for his morality. I mean, that's yeah. not, I mean, obviously, um, and we look at it biblically, there are a lot of leaders that were put in place that were not godly men that God had used, you know, like mm-hmm. Nebuchadnezzar and Darius and the Old Testament. But I'm not saying that's, we're not equating Trump to that on a biblical scale, but that's w- what our conviction was. And But there are some things that we had to pray about. Like, we are registered as Republican in the state of Hawaii, but we're mm-hmm. not Republicans. That's just the party that gave us a candidate that we needed to vote for. And I agree with you. Like, we're not Republicans. Like, first and foremost, I'm a son. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Like, I'm a child mm-hmm. of the king. That's, you know, I vote for whoever God tells you to vote for. Um, mm-hmm. I, I well, that's, the- that's one thing that I'm taking more into account this, this election. I, my first time voting was 2020. And I voted for Trump. Um, the reason I voted for Trump was because he seemed... He was selling us on shared values that he he for somehow he was now per life. He was this. He was that. And the reason I was noticing Trump more because in the Marine Corps, actually, Trump was a big deal when he got elected because he had the secretary of defense yeah. was Mad Dog Mattis. Mad Dog, the secretary. He, he's a he's a he's a legend in the Marine Corps. He this man is a legend. So when he got elected and Mad Dog was the um, secretary, General Mad Dog, <laughs> he the Marines were nuts. It was like, oh, like let's go, like we we have a great leader and this and that. And then we all know how that turned out. He ended up not uh, sticking around for a, for the long haul, and that happened in Trump's administration more often than not. People were just, you know, you the turnover. Th- the turnover was insane. You think that he didn't get as much power as he wanted mad dog from my understanding i just think he 
Trump is not a very good judge of character. I think some of the fallout was, um, from what I read, um, was that he he spoke against General Milley's um, nomination for the chair, and Trump went with him anyway. And he just, I don't think Trump is very <laughs> receptive of uh, opinions and stuff like he's very, I guess he makes a decision. He just calls the shots and, and who cares? I, I do believe that he picked the wrong people. Uh, and I think he chose poorly on some of them, but I almost feel like mad dog. I, I think it was just too alpha. You, you can't have two major alphas like that in the same room. Somebody's going to yield. And it's unfortunate. I, 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 I looking back, I, I wished they were able to make it work because I agree with you. Like to have him, right in in your in your the same room. Come on, like that was a bad <laughs> call in my opinion. But yeah. you know, I, I will. So I actually seen Trump. I've been to two rallies, uh, way before he became president. It was in two thousand and five, and two thousand and seven. I seen him in. Uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and then I seen him in uh, Dallas, Texas, and they were for business conferences. And bro, I'll tell you what: in in, in Baltimore, he had this helicopter land on his skyscraper. He rides the elevator down to a limo. The limo brings him to the convention center where we we're all waiting for him. And just everybody erupted like this. He had it all. He had it like my friend Brian Escal said. He had it dialed in way back then. Mm. He had the money, money, money music, and he jumps up on stage. I think there was like twenty thousand people standing ovation, just roaring his name. Not his name, but just like they're excited that he was um, partnering up with this company that we were a part of. And I remember, I remember nobody hated him. Not a single person. At, at least in general, uh, I'm sure in the construction side is a different story. Um, but I remember that when he spoke, he spoke a lot different. He spoke with big words. He actually used big words. And it's I find it so ironic when he got into office, he used like nine words. It's going to be great. The country is going to be like the greatest we've ever seen. <laughs> She's ugly. She's a pig. She's the dog. That's it. Like nine yeah. words. Mm -hmm. And I find it so strange that he got the election on nine words versus when I first seen him all those years ago in a business conference where he used big words and he was he is very eloquent in speaking. And I was like, that's such a strange. And I know it. Part of it is that it, it was a approach that he took, and I believe that's how he got the election was just that. I think Brian Escal said in my last one of my podcasts with him, he says he had this guttural, like deep down here, we're going to wait and like that versus Obama, who you need a college degree just to decipher what he's trying to tell you, you know, <laughs> you know, but I don't think Trump is a shoe in. I don't think so. I don't care what the, the, the numbers are saying. Um, I am concerned about what if all these roadblocks that they're putting up against him doesn't work, right? Uh, Colorado just approved them again, right? Yeah. But then there's another state. What was the other state that? Uh, I they, think Maine. Maine. Mm -hmm. So my question, and maybe you have thoughts on this, what happens if they keep putting up these roadblocks and none of them work? What's the next? What is the next logical step? Realistically, we we don't want to talk about it, but what is, if they're that adamant on trying to stop him from getting into office, what is the only next logical step? What? Where, where my theory is that he is going to get he from what I understand he is going to get convicted of he's got ninety one charges against him, and I think there's like a ninety five percent um, conviction rate in in some of those. Um, and from what I understand is from what I, I what I'm gathering and what I what I would guess is that this is all taking place also, not just because he did some illegal stuff because he did. But also because. He, he they can beat him, I think I think they realize that he they can beat him because Trump can he has his base, his supporters, he has lost s s several because we're just we're like me personally, I'm just tired of it. I I want 
people to focus on their jobs and, and just, you know, run the country. But I think that Trump awakens something in people that oppose him that gets a lot of people to vote against him as well. So my opinion is that some of these things that are happening uh, may not hold up, but they're, they're giving him a little bit of a, of a boost and making his supporters want to vote for him even more. They're trying to make him a, a martyr, essentially. And I think that that it, they're, they're hoping that that will get him enough momentum to win the primary and become the um, the the nominee for the general. And, and I think uh, if, if whether it's Biden or whoever it is, I don't, I don't think Trump has a shot at beating anybody that he faces. Tucker Carlson and I forget who else mentioned it. But Tucker Carlson asked Trump to his face. And I'll, I'll pull up the clip if I can find it later. He says, aren't you concerned that they're going to try to assassinate you? And Trump didn't answer directly. He didn't, he didn't answer the question up front. And when I watched that interview, I'm like, that was my thought too. Because if they keep trying to shut him down, whoever it is, for whatever reason, well, why is that? Like, why are they so adamant? I'm not talking about the charges or anything. I'm just, it's like I said earlier, like n- nobody hated him until he got into office. Really. I mean, we really think about it. Nobody did campaigns, smear campaigns on him until he got into And once he got into office, it was very clear that they had it out for him from day one. As a matter of fact, even before he, you, do you remember the um, the correspondence dinner? Back, I think it was in 2013, 2014, Obama was speaking. I wasn't, I wasn't involved or like so engaged with it. Trump was in attendance because he was one of the donors. Yeah, you got to spend a lot of money to attend this this dinner. Um, and Obama dedicated like a couple, like two to three minutes on just ridiculing Trump at the time, and he he didn't announce that he was going to run, but. Obama made a video mm, of the Trump. I think I've seen clips. Yeah. Yeah. And they say what they're saying is that was the day that Trump said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna show these guys. Yeah. And, and like politics aside, if it's man to, if you and I are in the same room and you made a video about me like that, I'd be like, whoa, brother, this bugger like scrap. You know what I mean? Like to make <laughs> a video like that and ridicule me in front of all these people, all these my my peers and i don't know what prompted that uh, maybe because i think trump was bad mouthing him in the media that's what it was but for for their pres a sitting president to make a parody video and broadcast it in front of the entire world to ridicule trump i think that was a moment trying to say okay i'll show you <laughs> you know it's like right right but up until that moment um politically speaking nobody nobody took him seriously yeah. If you remember, right. If you remember all those videos, everybody's saying Trump will not get into office, and everybody and people were laughing at him. And I'm like, well, at one point, Hillary had like a 91 percent chance of winning. So as that tells you how much you can trust these numbers and and those the polls. Yes, yeah, the polls. So I testified in front of um, the Hawaii State Senate back in 20. I can't remember what year it was. I think it was 2014. Uh, they were passing a same-sex uh, bill. They were tr- actually they were trying to pass the bill without the public knowing. There was ten thousand of us every night protesting in front of the state capitol to where they say, you know what? Okay, we're gonna have to pause this session. Let's get you guys written test. We did. We all did written testimonies, and we all testified in front of the Senate. I cited a poll that was in favor of letting the people decide the outcome of this. Uh, it was called SB one, which was same-sex bill. Well, the poll was in the favor of the people. So when I cited this poll in front of the the, the legislators, I read my, I, I did my written testimony. I, I cited the poll, which was on a, a news station. After I'm done, what what happens is after the first batch of people testify, the law, the lawmakers will decide if they're going to call anybody back to re, to do a rebuttal. I was one of those people they call back for a rebuttal, and they said. 
Uh, Mr. Lopez, do you understand what a Gallup poll is or Nielsen's ratings poll, whatever polls they said? So mm -hmm. I said, I do. And so they said, do you understand that there are polls that are certified? You know, all this fancy big words are using. So I said, I, I understand. And I already knew where they're headed. So, well, the poll that you cited, although it's on a, on a news station, it's not a valid poll. It's more of an entertainment poll. That's what they were saying. So I'm like, okay. I let them finish. I said, you know, with all due respect, if this poll were in your favor, you would not be having me up for this discussion. Right. Let's be honest. And I, and I just turned around and walked away. And that's true. If the poll was in, in their favor, they wouldn't, we wouldn't be having that discussion. But those polls, I, I get it. They're, they don't reflect, you know, they don't necessarily reflect the entire body of, of, of the population of people. I mean, who knows yeah. who they're paying to? to I, do this. I think, yeah, you can like pretty much tailor them to what you want the answers to be, I think. So, yeah, yeah but I'm no expert, so I'm not. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. Uh, if. No, I, I got to save the question for last, but. um, Who's going to be his running mate? How, that, that's probably one of them. Mm. There are names thrown out there but you you just don't know i mean kim reynolds from iowa is a is an option i think um massey the the congressman is an option chip roy the congressman is an option I, but who knows i don't know maybe glenn, glenn youngkin if i don't know if he backs him i don't know there's there's so many options out there what about christy Noel? She's a big uh, Trump supporter. Yeah, but like a, she, let's say she's, goes, been, she's been taking shots at DeSantis this this campaign and stuff. But you know, we're we're talking about politics and government, right? Right. At the end of the day, like how many times did Kamala Harris go up against like they all bad mouth each other? <laughs> but, yeah. For the sake but of the I, I, I I I do think uh that's that's the one different thing about DeSantis. He he's he's more calculated, he's more um, he th he's, he thinks uh, he thinks about things very thoroughly, and and he makes decisions um, sa like sound decisions. He doesn't just he doesn't just jump into something because he feels like you know for whatever reason. And his wife, um, I think she'd be a good fit in the White House. I think. Oh yeah, I think I so. Think she's so. very she's a very classy lady. She's. Um, you know they have a beautiful family yeah. she's she's they're never getting any scandals nothing she's they're all business they that's how they've been leading leading florida it's all business it's all you know let's get these things passed let's let's handle business well i gotta ask you this though the i think it was the first debate when they asked if trump gets a nomination will you support donald trump you remember that question they asked everybody yeah i, I think ramaswamy was like hand up real fast yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Some other people were kind of like and i don't know this is all obviously subjective right this is my opinion or what i saw i don't know what really trans because i wasn't there but yeah. DeSantis looks left or right and then he raises his hand well i he already signed the pledge in order to debate you have to sign the pledge that says that you're going to support the nominee and you're, you're just going to back him so if trump is the nominee the Santos has answered that question multiple times. That he would he signed the pledge. He's gonna honor the his signing of the pledge. And that tells you about his honor, you know. But I think the way I took it, that why he was like all slow to raise it, is because when they did the whole thing also during one of the debates, and they were like, raise your hand if you who would you vote or write down who you would vote off the island or something like that yeah yeah. And he was like no what are we doing here like are we are we children or something like that this is not what we're here for so in my opinion it was like okay you're asking me to raise my hand if i'm gonna back the guy like we already signed the pledge so the way i took it, it was like he was looking around like are we really doing this right now so he I, was like, I, I agree. He I was like, he was like, he was like fed up with it. And he just kind of like raised his hand. That was probably for optics, right? To get that reaction. I, I, I think they're calculated like that, right? With the mainstream media, they'll do things. Maybe they're right. Like, all right. Like, why would you ask? Like, 
That's how I would be like. I mean, and look at look at what they've gotten from it. Great clips that he has. Good clips, yeah. He he might not do it, but the man has said, "I signed the pledge. I'm going to do it." Yeah, I, I think Trump's the only guy that that hesitated and legit real like he's the one that said, like, without saying it, like, "No, I, of course not. Like, if I don't get it, I'm, no, it's nobody. It's either me or nobody." That's that was Trump's Trump. mindset. Yeah. Well, he's not. He he doesn't want to sign the pledge. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons he won't debate, because he doesn't want to sign the pledge, and then his ego tells him that he's ahead of the polls, so he doesn't want to debate anybody. But also, I think it's fear, because if you put him up there, questions are going to be asked, people are going to ask him questions and attack him and actually debate him, and I think he, mentally, I don't see him, like, I mean, Biden beat him during the debates. So it's hard for me to not think that he just won't do it because he he's confident that he's going to win it. Why did Biden beat him in the debates? It, it, if so, what would be your your bullet points on like why did he beat Trump in that debate? Well, overall, I just I think I don't I don't think Trump is a good debater. I mean, <laughs> he just isn't. He's a man that he likes to type behind his keyboard and you know say all these things and sound tough and but he ultimately ends up folding he he's he, i just don't think he's a good debater not that biden is either i mean he look at but what we're not realizing is that trump is going to be the same age biden was when he takes office if he takes office and i just i've lost so much like my my eyes were my like open like what was I even thinking voting for this guy to begin with? <laughs> like, I, I feel like so dumb to that I even voted for him in the beginning. But it is what it is. Tala said he was coming down with COVID. I, I don't know. I, I can't honestly remember the debates. But uh, I, I will say that um, part of the debate, I remember, I think Trump is a great counterpuncher. I think if he haven't come up with an opening like arc, you know, to to start something, I don't think he's that. But when you come up against, I think he's better at that versus because if you remember when he first started running uh, or even campaigning and running, he didn't use cue cards. He didn't use um, teleprompters. And when I saw him in the two rallies in 05 and 07, he, he would walk up on stage with literally just a sheet of paper. And you could see it because they had him on a big cam on a big jumbotron, and he <laughs> he used a sharpie. You know, it was it's like I was saying earlier. It's so surreal that his language is different back then. A lot well, different. He was doing. He was. He's been doing TV his whole life. Yeah. Like, well, a lot of a lot of his life. Yeah. So it's like I feel like he's comfortable in those scenarios. He's yeah. he's comfortable with that kind of stuff. Well, but you have noticed the decline. I don't know. Well, I, I I don't know if you have, but I've noticed the uh, decline. I, I think he definitely. I I think the first term, and um, I don't know if you saw the pictures of, of Obama. I met Obama. He he came to Hawaii. We actually were hosting him, and I his pictures are in my timeline. But I will tell you this, man. He looks old in person, like on pictures. It looks, but. And he's not that old. Like, I, there's something about being a public servant on that level. Yeah. I don't care who you are. And I respect every president. I don't care if I vote for you or not. I respect the fact that you sacrifice all of that to be of service, whether you legitimately did it to serve a country or not. After I met a, a former president, like, organically, I'm like, okay, I, I and I didn't vote for Obama at all. But when I, you know, it was an honor to meet someone of that. And it's like, I respect that. And I, I agree with you. Trump probably he, he probably lost a few years serving uh four years in yeah. office. And I don't think Biden can handle I don't think Biden can handle another year, honestly. Just no. it's it's too much. Like I I would be mad if that was my grandpa. I'd be like, bro, what are you guys doing? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's it's elder abuse abuse at this point. Yeah. It, it, we can't yeah. deny that. Like <laughs> when he when he starts going, you can sum up our, our country in a single word. A buff, like, come on, dude. That's <laughs> but so if DeSantis gets in, 
his first 100 days what do you what, what, what is his does, did he even put out anything yet like what he would like to do in the first 100 days if he gets in any idea yeah i mean he's put out um the things he wants to do as far as he obviously he wants to repeal what biden has signed uh green green new deal or whatever yeah. he wants to um crank up um energy independence uh he wants to he wants to do the the get the wall funded through money paid by people that are working here sending money back to their countries so he wants to use though i think it's called uh, remittances or something like that and th th those are some of the things he wants to handle I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it would take place during the first 100 days uh, but he he makes a great point that if he has he's gonna have eight years to to do to, to do stuff he's gonna right. have and he may i think i was watching an interview or something you don't really have eight years it's like when congress is in in session it's when this thing is happening so ultimately you have like in eight years you you get a total of like probably half of that to actually get legislation passed and and those things so that's why the first i think the first six months that's when they do the most in my opinion they sign everything mm -hmm. to kind of get things because once they get traction on who you are they're like they're not gonna if, if they don't want to support you they won't like right Trump's four years, no, like it, it, it's almost like once he lost support, it's like that their their sole focus was to get him out, right? That was the only focus after that. Once they've, I think DeSantis is probably the safest choice in terms of if, if you were to say like Ramaswamy, I, I like what he sounds like, I, mm -hmm. I like what he looks like. I don't they think say he's the he's the Obama of this. Yeah. Yeah, the Republican Party. he's smart. So he took a page out of Trump's book, right? Like he's on social media every day. He's going live, if not every day, every other day. Yeah. And he's doing it well. Um, I just don't know if anybody will support him. If, if I don't know yeah. if anybody will agree to run with his playbook. I personally think he has no shot at the White House. Yeah. And I, I just I don't I don't see it. I really don't. I mean. He's got a better shot than Christie, that's for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> He's just there to bash Trump. I, I, I'm not. I, I'm not casting. Why well, am? But Christie, I swear, he's like the he's like the court jester. Every time we have an election, like he's the one guy you throw in there just to make people laugh. Or I, I, I know he's got a book coming out. Brian Escott was telling me he's got a book coming out because I was like, why is he even running if he's got like one percent? <laughs> Two percent, even yeah. three percent. Like why? And I never understood that part of politics. Why do people run knowing they have no chance at all? Like, what is the purpose? Like, who's paying them to do that? I mean, they're getting publicity, and I don't know how the whole donations thing work, but uh, he's got to be getting paid somehow to live off of that, right? And you're getting publicity. Then you you know you, you come out with a book. So people know your name, so they're gonna want to buy it. I just feel like you know you get some you get something out of it. My my personal conviction is if I know I have no chance of winning, I could not sleep at night knowing that I kept an honest voting American from voting from for someone. Strung that, him along, yeah. You strung yeah. him along, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Just, I I think I'd be the same way. I, but Ramaswamy, so you don't think he has a chance against DeSantis? It, no, I I really don't. And I, if you notice what he's doing, he's I think he's really good friends with Trump's son-in-law, and he uh, hasn't attacked he hasn't attacked Trump once. Is and that uh, Jared? Just, yeah, Jared. And he yeah. he he hasn't attacked Trump once. He won't condemn him from it for anything that he did wrong. And he's just there, I think, as a uh, what's it called? He's just there to cause division and to. Um, you know, he's kind of like uh, I don't know what the word is. I can't think of it right now. But he, I think he's gonna support Trump when if if Trump gets a nomination, and look what he's doing with the whole solidarity thing that he's gonna drop out of those states that want to keep Trump off the ballot. Yeah, I, I remember so, seeing. Well, it, I it's think he's just stunts. 
it sounded good. I, I didn't listen to the whole thing where he said, and I'm paraphrasing, but like we need to like rally against these states that are gonna because yeah. But it definitely sounded political in a sense that making it sound like it's for all Republicans. You know, well, like, yeah, and he tried to call out uh, DeSantis and and Haley to like do the same thing, and it's like I just don't think that that's the way to approach it. I mean, Trump puts his foot in his his foot in his mouth a lot, so uh, I don't. Well, know. let's be real. If if I was DeSantis, I'm like, nope, that that's your. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. He, he said, I think he said it doesn't accomplish anything. What? So we're gonna not have a nominee for the Republican Party and just hand the White House to whoever the the Democratic Party wants to put out. So, are you? What are your thoughts on popular vote versus electoral college? So I'm not. I'm not. I, I couldn't dive into that. <laughs> Me- like I said, I'm not a political geek. Well, I will but say I've, I've heard you know arguments against the electoral college. I'm not an expert, so I can't give an honest. Uh, I don't want to say opinion. I can't give an honest evaluation of it, but I can give my viewpoint on it. That coming from Hawaii, we only have a million people, one point one point four in the entire state, and. Hawaii has always voted Democrat, even though the way we live is not Democrat, which is very ironic in Hawaii. So it it alludes to the fact that, and I personally experienced that there is corruption in our government in Hawaii. Uh, Going back to the SB1, where we vote, where they voted for same-sex marriage. So a, a lot of our friends that ran for the Senate, when we were in their offices the night before they voted, they shared an, an inter-office memo email that was sent to all the lawmakers. And I can say this now because it's way, it's it's history now, but in the email that was sent to all the lawmakers was, I'm going to try to verb it, uh, get the right verbiage, but the, the email said, I encourage you or implore you to vote in favor of SB1 tomorrow morning to ensure that your state will get the proper funding it requires in the future for whatever your needs are. And it came from President Obama's office. Oh. So what does that say? That says that if you don't vote for the bill tomorrow, you will not be given the funds that you may require in the future. So it was almost, it was, so the lawmaker that showed it to me and, and our, our, our prayer leaders that were there was like, they felt like the pressure. If they don't vote, they'll know who didn't vote for it. I mean, it's all, oh. it's all public. That pressure was put upon the state of Hawaii lawmakers to vote for that bill from the office of the president of the United States. My question is, what is the president of the United States doing in a state matter and why? Why is that? And that that just proved to me that there is corruption, even in the state of Hawaii. So when we talk about elections and electoral college, and it's like California has, I think, 30, let's just say 35 to 39 million people. Yeah, if they go to popular vote or Texas or Hawaii, well, the California has more registered um, Republicans. Yeah, actually, from, from what I just learned this like a couple days ago. I didn't know that. Yeah, me neither. So, but I guess you know the Democratic Party maybe campaigns better or something, and they just get the votes out there. But, but it, it, if you think about it. Of, the, of the, our values, you were saying how it's weird that how people in Hawaii uh, they, they voted Republican, I mean Democrat for so long because it's you don't really align with them. It's the same thing with the Hispanic vote. I think a lot of people are waking up, but when you look at the values and kind of where you align, and you just I don't understand. They just I guess the Democratic Party just does a better job of selling themselves and making it sound pretty. Calab. I was really, I, I can see Tala's number right here. Tala, Tala is my, uh, she is my accountability. She's my, the, she's stats. She's everything. <laughs> she's been with me since 2015, 2016. I'm so grateful that she's taking the time to listen to us. Oh, she's, she's, she's legit, but I'm telling you. Um, 
was it yesterday? Yeah, it was just yesterday I did a podcast with her. And she's like, yeah, I, I listened to it. And she was like, she's texting me like, like, and I'm going to paraphrase it, Tala, but she's like, what the heck? Why are we late? Like, what, what, what is this? Hawaii? We operate on island Hawaiian time? I was like, yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Tala. You know what? Um, oh, this is the question I was going to ask you. So you talk about Hispanic. So are, are do you consider yourself Hispanic? Yeah, Latino, Hispanic. I, I use both, either one. Can, can we talk about that? Because sure. So in Hawaii, we don't use the word Asian. So mm. I'm Hawaiian, Chinese, mm-hmm. Filipino. Um, growing up, if you and I are in a room, I look at you and uh, I, let's just pretend that you're, um, I'm going to pretend you're Portuguese, okay? And mm-hmm. I say, oh, Mom, this is my friend Carlos. His mom is Portuguese. His dad is Hawaiian. He's Portuguese Hawaiian. That's how we would. And it's not that we're discriminating or separating. We took pride in what we were. And so, anyways, when I came to Oregon, I heard the term. Heard I saw. I'm going to use a word. I saw Asian people calling themselves Asian. So I'm like, "What kind of Asian are you?" Mm-hmm. And then they go, "Oh, I'm Korean." Oh, okay. And they're like, "Why?" Why, why why do you ask? I said, because it's important. I don't know. I'm part Chinese, Hawaiian, Filipino. But I found that they categorize people in boxes. And let's shove all these people in this box, all these people in this box, and that's how we're going to keep them separated. I'm not getting political, but that's how we keep them separated. We can identify that way. Well, the question I have is, here in, in Oregon, I, I hear people, or oh, even on TV, they'll say, oh, the whites and the blacks. You've heard people say that, right? The whites, oh, the whites. So my question is, why is it okay to say that? What am I? Am I the brown? I think so, yeah. I think we're brown. No, I'm, brown I'm, too. No, I'm the yellows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the yellows. Oh, I'm brown. I'm, I'm the yellows. But the funny thing is that when I have to fill out paperwork or doctors <laughs> or something, I'm yeah, considered yeah. white. The, 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 I, that's my, that's where I have to like fill in white. So, yeah, I've yet to see some of that privilege. I, I have a white privilege card somewhere. My brother bought one. <laughs> no, it, it's a real card. You can buy on I know. I've seen. I've seen him. I've seen him. <laughs> he just that's showed funny. me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My dad has that's one hilarious. too. Yeah, that's hilarious. Man. You know what's funny, and I don't think it's racial, but since I've been in Oregon, I've been put over five times. You have, yeah. I haven't been given a ticket. Wow. But two out of the five are legit stops. Like, but they're not a big deal. Like, I I made a turn and I didn't stay in my lane. I went to the outside lane. I think everybody does that just by default, unless there's two turning yeah. lanes, right? But or unless there, there's a cop around. Yeah, yeah, but I just didn't think of it. Like, so that's one that's a legit, and the other ones were I had my dash cams and all that. But I just somebody asked me today, "Oh, do um, you think they're profiling you?" I said, "I don't know if they can see in the car, but they might have been. But it's hard to see inside my car." Yeah, but um, it, it depends on what I'm driving too. Um, where I, where we live now, it's a red town, and I think they call it red town, it's a conservative town or red city. Mm. You know, Republicans. Yeah, I think so. So if I'm not driving a Ford pickup truck or a Chevy, they're going to pull you over because you're suspicious. Mm, okay. If you're driving an Audi or a Subaru or a BMW, they're going to pull you over. <laughs> I don't think that's racial. I think that's just, uh, we're going to get some money from this guy. <laughs> you know? Probably. Yeah. That's funny. Well, let me ask a few more, and I think we can land a plane soon. Okay. Let's talk about X for a second. Um, okay. What is your, um, do you have a vision or a desire, something you want to accomplish when you're on X? Because I, I don't think I ever asked that before. Maybe I have, but like, why are you on X? So I got on X November of 2022, right after Elon bought it. Never dealt with Twitter. Never, I, I had no idea what it was like. Uh, if you talk to people, it was like, oh, it's just a cesspool. It's just this and that. <laughs> too political. It's too, 
and this and, and too nasty or too whatever. And so Elon bought it. And I, I maybe it was a way of supporting the fact that he bought it because he was for free speech. And then it was also curiosity. Curiosity. I was curious what, what it was like. So I downloaded it. I got on. And I just started going through it. And I actually posted a few things back then, I think. They might now be deleted. I don't know. But it was just, I think I got into the whole, like, oh, it's like political and then this and then that. And I was like, but then I saw, no, I just saw myself like, what am I even doing this for? I, I already have Facebook. I, I'm already, you know, whatever. So I, I pretty much deactivated it. I just stopped using it. I deleted the app from my phone. And then I came back. Um, I think September of this year and I came back because I was like, let me try Let me try it again. Let me see what, what it's all about, what I can do in there. And I started to like join spaces and just hearing people talk. And then I, I saw it as an opportunity to like, okay, like social media, I see a path for social media. Like people can grow in social media. And then there was the whole like political campaign going on. And I'm like, I want to give my support for this the Santas, you know, for the Santas. I I think he stands for my values, and I, I want to support him any way I can. I want people to see that he has support from regular people like like me. And so that was one of the things. And then I started to see the the whole like monetization aspect of it, and I was like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me that if I reach these milestones, I can like start getting paid? And so then it became a goal to do that as well. So not only was I posting some political stuff, but then I started posting um, just like my thoughts and just different things. And and actually for, for like a, a few weeks, a couple of weeks, I was like, I'm not going to post too much politically because I don't want to get like too caught up in it. Like yeah. po politics doesn't drive my life at all. But then I started to like just post uh, a little like more diverse things and, and then i i started to get close to my mark and then of like 500 followers <laughs> yeah. and then i was like man i'm getting I, I reached my impressions before i reached my followers and then i started to get like more like just authentic i guess you could say yeah and i'm i'm interested in the politics that it's taking place right now i'm also interested interested in 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 like growth uh personal and professional i'm interested in you know christian stuff I've, I've joined some christian conversations and so i'm like i just want to okay, i'm just me i'm gonna post if i see something that i i have an opinion on i'm just gonna post it if i see something that i want to support i'm just gonna post it and so i asked the approach i took and then i started to gain more followers and, and i'm like okay i reached the 500 as soon as i reached the 500 i was able to apply for monetization and I've gotten three, three, three checks so far. That's nice. So I'm seeing it as a, okay, like, this is incredible. Like I've never gotten paid online. And I was like, from, from where I come from, I'm like, that, that was, I guess, a boost of confidence. Like, oh man, like you can actually earn something from this. So I see X as a tool at this point in my, in my, my journey. Um, I'm, I'm here to promote DeSantis. <laughs> but I also see it in the future as something more, as something where I can like be myself, express myself. And then I don't know if I'm going to land in some, some type of coaching, um, but I have been, uh, I guess, drawn to like the, the coaching aspect of things. And I think I have experiences that people don't have. I have perspectives that people don't have. And I have uh, obviously uh, I married kids, military background, you know, uh, living in different countries. So I, ha I have different perspectives that people don't have. So I have something of value to offer. And that's one of the things that you don't realize. I, yeah. I think I was I was beating myself up a lot. Like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then so X has given me a voice and it's given me an opportunity to kind of find my path and my and my purpose, I guess, if you want to call it. So you're fairly new, like prior to X, you're on Facebook primarily or a social yeah. social media. Okay. And and it's it's all family. If you think about it, Facebook, <laughs> I only see people that I know. And I'm like, okay. And then the whole COVID happened and you weren't allowed to talk about anything. And 
I, my post, I, I think I'm de-boosted on Facebook, if I'm being honest. Because I post anything and it's like doesn't get any anything, anything, not even from family or nothing. And I'm like, okay, it is what it is, you know, but I, I still post every now and then. But I, 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 I grew tired of Facebook. I guess I keep it just for the family. But Same X it's, X is so much bigger. Like, where else can I join a space and listen to Elon Musk talk live and just share his thoughts on something? Where else can I meet somebody like you? And then, like, you know, a month or two later, be on, on this the podcast talking to each other. So it's like the, the opportunities that it's providing, it's like, it's mind-blowing to me. I, I think Spaces kind of took a lot of people by surprise. So for people that don't know, um, it, it, it's funny because there's the old school people that I run with from years ago. I've been on Twitter for at least seven years before Elon and all that. And what a lot of people don't realize is that people are, are discovering this live video function and it's um, they're saying, oh, wow, we can go live now. I'm like, no, we've been able to go live for seven, eight years now. And it's funny because it just shows. So Tala's in here. She know, like there was a monetization model when they have the live video. I was averaging about one hundred forty dollars a month just by going live and people would, um, they, they would call it like super hard. You would purchase and they could tap the screen and they would donate money. So our viewers would pay us money basically. So every month I would get a check from Twitter deposit, seeing how you're getting with the ad revenue. Mm -hmm. So they had that live video format. And now that we're talking about, we're talking, this will tie into politics. So I was watching, um, uh, I think it was Donald Trump at a press conference. We, and I was doing it on my lunch break and he was on Fox News. The video froze. I'm like, what the heck? So we went to CNN and the video froze. It says, please pardon the whatever. We have technical difficulties. Well, if you know, I'm going to turn on my phone. And he was live on at the, the app was called Periscope, which Twitter owned. And mm -hmm. we were watching it live and it was live. Somebody had a cell phone at the press conference broadcasting the press conference. There was no technical difficulties with the person's cell phone, but it was so ironic that both networks could not get a video feed. And what Trump said in that press conference was something that wasn't nice. It wasn't favorable for the mainstream media. And I remember that moment. And like, these guys are dirty. But then I never thought about how big the picture, how big this really is. Because when Elon released the, the Twitter files, it all started to make sense to me. Because what happened was Twitter got rid of the live stream app portion of what I was talking about. It was so amazing. Like, I could literally go to any country in the world. I would go on my phone and say, I want to go to Japan. I want to go to Hokkaido. I want to go to Osaka. I tap on the screen, the little red dot, and it would take me right there, and that guy is live. If you didn't see my friend David Osaka, my podcast with him, that's how I met him, was through the Twitter live video function that they had, which was another app name. I think they got rid of that because what during the election cycle, anybody and uncle, grandma, whoever could take the cell phone and give you a live video feed of what is really happening. And the mainstream media had no power or authority to shut it down. Mm. And I think when it's when, when Elon released the Twitter files, I said, Oh, now it makes sense. Cause everybody was like, why would you get rid of live video? And go to audio. That makes our minds are like, what in the heck are you doing? You're getting rid of live video. I can't go to Japan anymore. I can't watch somebody. Dude, we had guys live streaming on the bottom of the Florida Keys with GoPro cameras, live streaming it live. You can look it up. Uh, their name is Dan. Oh, I forget their name now. But they lie, They were the first people to live stream in the world using Twitter, X, Periscope, the app. Um, people would skydive. A guy took his, he live streamed from a helicopter. It was a pilot. They got rid of all of that capability of live video and they went to audio and they called it spaces. Mm -hmm. And we were like, what the heck is going on? Like, that makes no sense. And the guy who pioneered the audio, his name is Kayvon Baycor. Kayvon Baycor is the founder of Periscope, the live video, live streaming app that Twitter bought for $120 million. Twitter paid $120 million for this technology only to shelve it in 2021. And they yeah. used that guy to usher in 
what we now call spaces. And it made no sense. Ask anybody that, that's a live streamer. They're like, why would they go cut out the video and go to audio? It, it, I'm not casting. Spaces is great. I, I love it. It's amazing. But I think we can all agree that audio is amazing. But we know that vid live video, video, the visual, you can't beat it. How many of us right. would, I mean, seriously, would we really be involved in an election if it was all audio? I don't think so. Like right. it's, and I, I'm not promoting pornography in any way, but do we really think pornography would be successful if it was only audio? Right. It's 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 a visual, it's video. So when we saw that, they got rid of that. It's like, oh, it's it's what I, in my opinion, it's a censorship deal. It's like, you know what? And when he released the Twitter files, I mean, Elon released that. And I think Matt Tabibi, I think his name is. He, yeah, I think so. He published it. And then it made sense that it was that on that grand of a scale to shut things down so people didn't have a voice they didn't have the ability to really show the world what what's going on and that's just my opinion i i really went a long tangent on that but we're talking about you know how you got involved in x and then when elon yeah. won, i totally agree with elon like uh i'm not gonna say he's in the same category as trump but i almost feel like he could be if if they can't shut him down, shut Trump down, if Ramaswamy ever gets into that box with them, what are they willing to do to these men that are going against the establishments? You know, and I'm not wishing that on anybody, but, you know, Elon is definitely, um, he, the last one he said to, I think the Bob, the... the, uh, the oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he got serious with that one. Yeah, but he, you know, he didn't walk it back. So he didn't. We know, we know that he's standing for something. And you know, the media trying to spin Linda Yaccarino as like, oh, she's, you know, got no power or authority. She's no, I, I, I disagree. I think that's why Elon brought her in. Mm. You know, because I, I think, I think she's doing a good job personally. But yeah, from what I've seen, mm -hmm. I, I think she is. I, I just wish they would bring in. And maybe tell me what you think. So, it, it, when it comes to live audio conversations and live streaming, and we're not talking about comfort zones, what do you think live video is going to play? How is it going to play out next year? You think with X? Oof, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be pretty big. I mean, look at all the people that live stream video games. You know, yeah. all this and that, and I think this is going to open another you know source of income for some people and so i i think people will jump at it and especially if you like you they promote it well and i, I see i see x growing even more in the next five years with I, everything that elon wants yeah. to do and the 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 fight uh the financial stuff that he wants to do with it as well. And then obviously yeah. the at live video and then spaces. I don't think it's going to go away. I think it's a cash cow. If, uh, and I always suggested this. I, I've always talked about this for years and Twitter Periscope X, they never did it or maybe not yet, but like even right now, if they gave us an option to opt in for ads, kind of like how Twitch, I'm not sure if you've ever been on Twitch, but if we were live on Twitch, my viewers would have to watch an ad for like 15 seconds before they can come into my live broadcast. The only way they can opt out of the ads is if they are a subscriber to my channel. So guess mm. what? I, I get $5 a month from that, from that viewer. Mm. They don't have to watch any of the ads. Or another form of monetization for live streamers is let them run a, a banner on the bottom of the screen that'll that'll promote Coca-Cola or F1 racing or come visit Colombia, go to Colombia.org, you know, like you can do rolling mm -hmm. ads like that. And it'll be a cash cow. So you've got ad revenue, but you also have subscriber revenue. Like I subscribe to four people right now. Um, one is Elon. This other guy named Greg. I don't know why we subscribe to. I don't even know why I subscribe to him. It just, Is it, isn't it because it's only like ninety nine cents? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. That guy. Yeah. I like I don't even know why he he's never acknowledged me. 
uh, I've tried to get his attention. I said, come on, us Greg's got to sit together. And he's never acknowledged me, but you know what? I, I, I subscribed to him for one month. And then I, 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 I saw the same thing you were. I'm like, I'm not getting any value for, you know, a dollar. <laughs> I can't cancel my, I don't, it, it won't let me cancel. So I'm stuck in really? it. Yeah. Oh, because, man. Because I have an iPad. I use my desktop. I have my, I have a, a Samsung phone and an iPhone stupid it's a stupid mistake because every time i try to cancel they say oh it says oh oh looks like you subscribe using a different device so i go to the yeah, other yeah 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 and they won't let me cancel so i'm like whatever i'll just keep paying yeah <laughs> I, I would support you like it, you know as long as you're not ten dollars a month i would support you five bucks a month you know <laughs> or I, I i already applied oh you subscription so i, I did i applied too but they said oh we're you're in review are you still in review Oh yeah, I I don't I don't see it happening for a couple of years because I think there's uh, they're doing like one by one, and I think there's people that have been waiting for six months and people that have been waiting longer than that. Dude, two of my friends got approved, and and, and I know them personally. Like I'm like, oh really? Yeah. So I'm like, well, how long did they wait? How long did they wait? Not that long. But the thing is, um, this is my opinion. I and I, I never analyzed it to now, but. One of them is Judy, uh, Judy Riley. If you look at who I subscribe to, she's from, she's in Hawaii. She doesn't get, and I, I, I'm going to maybe stir up the pot. That's okay. We don't have a lot of people uh, watching at this moment, but there's a lot of people that pay for uh, impressions, right? And mm. it, it is good in the eyes of a advertiser because they're like, oh, wow, this guy gets a lot of views. Well, the problem is the conversion rate. I don't know how good that is nobody knows because i asked uh and we can talk about this now but i've been approached by i would say two or three people that say hey would you like me to promote your you know your brand and your your profile and we'll promise you um whatever i'm just throw a fake number a hundred thousand impressions per day whatever and i'm like so the question i asked was well i i I am, I do, I am considering that that, that, because it's a business to me, it's a business. I I'm all for it. If that's how you treat it. And that's how to me, it's a form of advertising. But what I'm not down for is if I'm going to pay for something like that, what is a conversion rate? Are these impressions people that are actually considering my, my products or service or what I'm talking about? Are they genuinely interested in what I'm, you know? So anyways, my friend Judy in, in, uh, in Maui, she's been, the same person for the past seven years. She broadcasts the same things. Her audience is a uh, very dedicated. Like they know who she is. They follow her. They subscribe to her for that specific reason. Um, and I think that's one of the metrics that they look at. It's not just total number, but like what is a conversion rate? If if they click on her name, do they go to the next step, which is maybe a link, or do they retweet or repost, or are they commenting? Right. I don't think it's just about total numbers, and I, th- and it's just my opinion. I think those people get looked at differently because they may actually generate more revenue than people that have beautiful glamour metrics. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I preach about that all the time. Like glamour metrics are good at face value, but the problem is, what are you convert? Are you are we converting those numbers into something legitimate? Right. And uh, I ain't going to call nobody up, but you can tell who's doing it because if they have a thousand or 3000 live viewers on the broadcast and then the next thing they post up, they have like 300 people look at it. You know that there's something going on. Like why are they only looking at this? And so, you know, we've been around the block for a little while, so we're not, (laughs) you know, but I'm excited for live, live video in that respect that it's a cash cow if they do it right. Uh, oh, and if they treat the content creators right. And, and I know we're all excited and we're very positive about it, but my hair, what the heck? Um, but, but I will say, uh, what's his name? The Beast, Mr. Beast. Uh-huh. He got some headlines recently. So he said, I, I, I uploaded a video, like it, or I'm going to kick you or whatever, beat you up or something. And somebody said, well, post it here on Twitter, on X. And he, he, he replied. Oh, actually, Elon said, yeah, do it. And then the Mr. Beast replied and said, I spend millions of dollars making all of my videos. If I post it on here, I won't even recover anywhere near what I, what I invested in those videos. 
And so when he said that, it, he started to trend on, on X on Twitter. And so I, it reminded me that as good as a platform is or can be, it, it, it'll, it'll live and die by the way they treat the creators. And I, I, will, yeah. I will share caution to anybody that is on cloud nine. Just remember that every great platform has had its heyday. Um, Twitter had it when they had Periscope as a live streaming app, and then it went down after that. Elon came in and bought it, and now we're looking up again. Twitch had its heyday. Twitch had created, I think Twitch created more millionaires than any other live stream platform on the planet, uh, wow. other than YouTube. Uh, but YouTube came a little bit late. To the, so I am excited for, for X. I, I just hope that they treat the creators right and they they pay uh, accordingly, you know. Right. Did you ever share your ad revenue share w- with anybody on, on online? I, I did the first one. You did? Yeah, it was yeah. like 30 bucks. Yeah, hey, it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It well, works. now I'm, a- I'm averaging like, I, I'm still a very small account. Very, yeah. very small. So I'm I'm averaging like six million impressions a month, and it's 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 been like thirty dollars, and then I think it's been like seventy dollars combined for like two months. So it's I mean it's seventy dollars I didn't have before, and it and it's paying for my ex subscription. Yeah. <laughs> you know I I couldn't. So when I first started on social media, on Twitter, on Twitter at the time, and I was on it, I was live streaming every day. And my wife was like, what are you doing? Like, you're at work. You're like, I was live streaming at work, bro. Hey, so I would be on my lunch break at work. And so we had this canoe. So we take the canoe out and we'll go to the, these, uh, these, if you watch my video, you'll see it, but we'll take the canoe out to the islands. And we just, we go uh, canoe surfing on my lunch break. And I'll live stream, okay. you know, us in the ocean and, uh, so anyways, my wife is like, what are you doing? If you want to be spending all this time, you better figure out a way to make money on this. So you know what we did? Uh, we ended up buying Twitter stock. <laughs> so uh, okay. yeah, yeah. So that was our way of making money on social media. Well, that was way back in the day. I think we bought it at $16, whenever the 16. And I think when Elon bought it, I think he was trying to buy it at $46 or whatever it was. But I couldn't wait for them to, mon- I was trying to monetize. And he said, you know what? I'm going to monetize myself and, I would encourage anybody and even you, man, like if you've got like you talking about the coaching and all, man, just do it. Like it's so, yeah, uh, it's available, right? Like for me, I have a website and I have links to like, I have, I sell t-shirts and coffee cups and all kinds of silly. I mean, Hey, if I wake up tomorrow morning and I made like 50 bucks, Hey, hallelujah. You know what I mean? And then, um, right. Companies like, I'll tell you, reach out to these guys. I'll send you the info. But like, this is one of my uh, partners, Archon Mountain. So, like, they have all this equipment. Like, I get 10 per- 10%. I forgot. I think 10% of whatever, uh, you know, if my followers buy products from them. And, of course, you give them a discount and all that stuff. Of course, my Dubby energy drinks. But there's people willing to throw money out there. You know, if you got content, you, you know, uh, my dream sponsor would be Manscaped. <laughs> yeah, 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 Manscaped. I really okay. tried. I really tried. You reached out to them. Yeah, I I, me- I emailed them twice, and like they, they send you the automated. Hey, thank you for that. Uh, somebody would reach out to you, and then somebody reached out to me, and they go, "Oh, we're sorry. Uh, you d- you don't meet our criteria at this time. Uh, check back in a few." But they don't tell me what the criteria is. Mm. Uh, I reached out to Butcher Box. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, because I. Yeah, I love to eat meat. So, um, yeah, I, I think I emailed like so far 60 companies. And, oh, okay. And and they all, how many reached out back out? Uh, about 20, maybe, maybe 20. But I've been doing this for a while. Like, there's other companies. I, I was sponsored by a, a scuba company for like about three months and I didn't make any money with them. So it's like, what's the point of me doing this? Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm fronting. What did they say? I'm, I'm just fooling people. Like, so I dropped that. <laughs> My famous story is pet, uh, Pedigo. You ever heard of Pedigo e-bikes, electric bikes? They were a sponsor for two, two months, two or three months. So they gave me a bike and I used to live stream. I don't know if Tali remember this, but, uh, Hey, Karen, Karen's on here. But, um, 
yeah so i used to ride this bike dude this three thousand dollar bike and um they gave me a bike to ride and I would, I would i would have to basically promote the bike i would have to take pictures and do uh i think at the time it was like one post every five days or something and then i would give a promo code uh for 10 i think it was 10 percent off uh off the bike whatever well the problem was the bike was the the starter bike was at twenty five hundred dollars so i couldn't get anybody to buy a bike so it's like what am i right. doing so i i went to the um i think uh, i forget her name but the manager i said you know what i i can't get anybody to buy a bike so so i i, I turned the bike yeah. back in and yeah. i'm like oh. it was cool though I, I will say that was a good experience i learned like hey just ask yeah. some of these companies yeah. are really um the worst they can say is no yeah well there's companies now that will pay you um i'll send you the if i can find i'll send you the link i just applied yesterday but they'll pay you to do ad, not just ads but like like what do they call it strategic placement mm. so let's say like we're live right now like i, I I'm, I'm just pretending but like sure is uh one of the brands i promote but i don't get paid by them right so but there are companies that will pay you to promote like putting stickers or whatever stuff like that right so, right okay but well one more what, what's one more thing we should talk about before we i meant to tell you what well, next time we'll, we'll talk about it but are you gonna actually before i, I ask that question we should do a spaces what we talked about earlier about the parenting the mm-hmm. the whole fatherhood and, and even faith I, I think we should do one of those mm-hmm. and we'll do it just for, have you hosted you've hosted spaces already one you you joined the oh. my most successful one <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've i've tried a few times and um you know it's just a learning experience but after, after after you joined the most successful one with like five people showed up, we had like a nice conversation. And then I've had a couple others where it was like one person each time and we just talked back and forth to each other. And then I've had multiple where nobody shows up. So it's a it's a it's a hit or miss, I guess. How did that and make you, you feel? You you, you brought uh, Tala. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be honest, how did that make you feel when nobody showed up? indifferent yeah honestly i i just sit there and i i wait to see if somebody pops up and i offer them the mic if they do but if they don't i give it a few minutes i think i've i've sat there for like an hour one time just i was just hanging out around the house doing something an hour went by nobody showed up oh well (laughs) i just close it down and then i go join another one or the one you joined i had actually tried twice before yeah i remember (laughs) And the, the first one was random. I, I, I can't remember. I said, I think it was like open mic. Then the second one was uh, space until one person joins. And then one person joined. And then I, I went to talk. I said, hey. And they left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've all done it that. Was the, it was the funniest thing. My wife died laughing when I told her that. She was laughing. She was like, so you went to talk to them and they just left you hanging? And I was like, yep. And I closed the space because I said space until somebody joins. And then I and then I closed that one down and I opened the one you joined, which was space until somebody speaks. And then you joined and, and, and you requested the mic. I, I'm not going to say who. And this is the mystery of spaces. And I think everybody's got their formula. Um, and before I lay this out, let me just... The guy that I worked with for the past, I say four years, and the company we had, which was Egg Drop, he, he was a, a Twitter engineer. Uh, there's another guy who runs in our circle, and Tala knows him. We're all friends, but he was also a Twitter engineer. And they will both tell you that everybody's chasing this almighty algorithm in the sky, and nobody knows what they're doing. They all act like they do, and they all charge you these rates to say, hey, which some of it works, but at the end of the day, I, I would say we all have to remember that somebody is controlling the algorithm for a reason. Mm-hmm. And somebody is changing the values of the metrics that determine the algorithms that will recognize you for a reason. 
that metrics are, it's kind of like, um, you know, if you get a job as an employee, you're going to work just as hard as you need to so you don't get fired. Your employer will pay you just enough to where you won't quit. And that's what the algorithm is to content creators. Mm-hmm. It's like, we got to do just enough so they notice us. And then they're like, okay, we'll give them just enough so they don't leave the app and go somewhere else. Well, it's. I think I saw a documentary or something about TikTok. Uh, that's kind of what they do. They yeah. anybody can sign up, and you know any random video is gonna go viral. Yeah, and then that gives people so, psychologically, it just gives you you know that dopamine, and then you're like, oh man, I can do it again. It's kind of like gambling, I guess. If you wanna, you know, you you get a win every now and then, and you're like, oh, I can double this, and then you just keep gambling away. I had a viral video on TikTok that hit 170,000 views in like, I think, three hours. And all it was was a clown stepping on a toy and he screamed his head off. And it wasn't even my video. <laughs> so I'm like, what the heck? And that's not even who I am. That's not even my content. Right, right. So, and going back to the spaces. So I, I'm not going to say who it is because I just thought it was interesting. There was a guy who has, uh, I think, 280,000 followers. He did a spaces and like five people showed up. Mm. And then I'm like, how can somebody with 250,000 followers only have five people show up to a spaces? Right. And it answers a lot of questions that or confirms that what I, what I always preach is that the amount of followers you have does not dictate the amount of people that are going to view your content. That just shows how many people followed you for whatever reason. They could be dead. Right. They, they could be grandmas. Like maybe grandma dropped her phone in the toilet and she can't find you anymore. I mean, it could be anything. And mm-hmm. I just found that interesting that someone of so much notoriety could only get five people to jump in on his spaces. And then there's someone uh, great, you know, People people engage amazing on spaces and they'll get like a thousand people to jump in on their spaces, right. you know. And uh, it's interesting, right? That everybody's chasing this almighty algorithm. But I think the one common denominator is that is the engagement factor. If you're engaging with each person as much as possible, they're going to come back, no matter what yeah. you. Do. You can do anything. Like you can post a video of a clown and people will watch it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, right. Right. But it's hilarious, man. Uh, we got to do another one. I, I want to do this organic, bro. So I told Tala in 2024, uh, we're gonna do a meetup, organic meetup. We used to do a lot of these, uh, where uh, we would travel to different places and we would organize a, whether a workshop or we would do a meetup, just our social. But I want to do one on the east coast next year, and okay. It, it, I don't. I really don't know. We we do conferences, you know, my wife and I. So we understand like there's a business side of it. And there's also a, a social aspect of it. I'm erring on the side of making it a bit. We can charge some money, you know, like fifty bucks to attend. And you get a workshop. Maybe Carlos can talk a little bit about whatever. Whatever is your level of, of expertise at the time. Or I don't know. I'm. It's it's open. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna do something soon. Okay. Yeah, we're, okay. we're, well, we're just talking. We're not planning. We're just talking. Right? My wife is like, "You already said you're going to California." Like, no, we're just talking. <laughs> just talking. <laughs> hey, um, man, I appreciate you. Anything you want to talk about before we go to rapid fire? Oh man, I, I I'm just grateful. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your platform. Uh, thank you for your friendship. It's been a it's been a pleasure to get to know you. And you know, this was a a nice conversation, just casual. Uh, you know, not bad for a uh, first time for me. <laughs> well, let me say thank you. Um, this is a learning. I, I'll be a straight up with you. This is a learning curve for me. Um, I'm learning every day and uh, I'm learning different. I've done so much different types of content. Um, I started as a location um, streamer, meaning I would just show beautiful stuff. Then I went to uh, informational things, teaching people how to do stuff. I would do tutorials on how to live stream, tutorials on how to do content. And I did so many different things. And uh, we've done a lot of giveaways where we would just, I'll be honest, I would do giveaways just because I wanted people to engage. And that was my way of doing it. And mm-hmm. I, of course, we bless people. We give them, you know, chocolate from Hawaii or we give, I give away tripods and all kinds of stuff. Um, 
But this, what I'm doing now, long form discussion, I love it. And uh, I, I got to get better at it. I, there's a lot of things I got to work on. I'm a one man band right now, but I would love, I have a barn like right over. It's so perfect. If I can clean it out and figure out how I'm going to do the, I want to do a studio, a podcast studio, but I love doing this long form because I think, I think TikTok, YouTube shorts, Instagram stories, I think it ruined it for like, content in my opinion if if i don't like you i'm just gonna swipe up but on long right. form i think there's a market for it i really think uh oh, yeah tala, let me address tala hey thank you tala love you too appreciate you thank you but yeah i, I you know i appreciate you being patient um I, there's definitely a lot of talking points i gotta work on and then just obviously timeliness and working on all the back i'm not good at back end stuff but I appreciate you taking the time and uh, it's not easy. Yeah, of for course. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I get nervous every time I go live. I don't know if you saw me in the beginning. I was kind of like, <laughs> I, I mean, think it's normal. No. Yeah. And I've been doing this for what? Yeah. Seven, seven years. And I'm on stage, like, you know, being on the stage and it, it's a good, good nervous, you know? So, yeah. But I do appreciate you, Carlos, and I appreciate what you're doing for your family, what you did for our country. Without sounding corny, I legitimately am grateful for what you did, even though, you know, like, I don't care if it's four years, 20 years, the fact that you made the cut and you served our country and very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing many more organic stuff with you. So I'm, I'll, I'll eventually have you as a guest on, on my uh, oh yeah, you, you got sure. your equipment. Listen no, well, <laughs> if I can get it to work right. <laughs> well, when the next time, whenever you have time, let me know. We'll we'll, we'll troubleshoot it together. Okay. I, I started good. like that. I have my USB mics back there, and I have the um. So what is is yours wireless now? No, so this is um. I ain't gonna lie. I I bought this for the visual aspect of it. Like this is my Sure SM7B. Uh, it's it's wired, um, but I have it. I, I'm I'm getting ready for studio applications. So there's a studio down the road from here that I'm going to do a, a like a it's like a I don't know what you call it. It's a studio space. So I told them I want to use this space for a couple of podcasts and just see what it feels like. And um, but all this other those are wired as well. But the USB one, this is the one I first started. I I started on this. Everybody knows this one. This is the Blue Yeti. This is the the beginner this thing is 140 dollars and it's not that good now but we, we all started somewhere and this is where i started this is the usb mic and yeah i'm, I'm gonna keep this wow. nice yeah. yeah you gotta you're gonna have to frame it once once you have your big old studio that's my dream and i don't know how long i'm gonna do this but it, if i so right now i've got four companies that believe in me um Two of them were guests on my podcast. And so I asked, would you be willing to do a partnership, whatever? I said, yeah, great. Well, so, so I'm like, you know what? Okay, if they believe in me, I'm going to keep doing this. And so that's why, you know, I do that little ad in the beginning because I appreciate the fact that they believe in me and they're willing to support. So, um, but I, I'm going to let me land the plane. I, I appreciate you, Carlos. And we'll get together and we'll talk about getting your setup uh, going. So here we All go, right. rapid fire. For those that don't oh, know, when, we, when we're ready to land the plane, we're going to do rapid fire. So it's just 10 questions. Carlos has less than 10 seconds to answer. There, there's no trick questions. They're simple questions just to see what's on his heart at the time. It may change tomorrow or maybe it won't, but here we go. Now, question number one, why did you do this podcast? Oh, man, I... I, I had to come have a conversation with you. It was, it was a great opportunity uh, for me to grow and just put myself out there. Taco or empanadas? Ooh, uh, a good empanada, man. <laughs> yep. Uh, this is a, a rapid fire question, but it's going to be a three part question. Okay. Uh, an intruder enters your home. Tell me the three things that you do. shout and grab my firearm and and be a threat to to them 
We'll come back to that if we have time, if you're if you're willing. Okay, next question. Money not an issue. Where do you travel to next? I would def I would go to uh, Greece. Oh. Fat, juicy steak, or succulent lobster. Give me a steak. Medium rare. Yeah. Ribeye. Sure, I'll eat, okay. but I'll eat anything. Those are all one question, by the way. It's so, okay. One line marriage advice. Oh, man. Be patient. Best advice that you were ever given? Um, l- l- listen twice as much as you speak. This one, listen carefully, okay? So what... Do you love the most? What do I love the most? What? God. <laughs> DeSantis loses. Who are you taking? Uh, I may not vote. That's fair. Wow, we went through that quick. Well, we'll come back to the the, the home read because I, I, I honestly want to ask you that question. Okay, so last question is, what is your desire for the next generation, oh, man, that they can they they can enjoy uh, the same opportunities that I have been able to enjoy. That is, um, you know, do what you want, whether it's serve or not. Um, start a family, uh, start your own business, and have children. Good. We'll come back to that one, but let's go back to the, so intruder enters your home, the three things you do, you shout, you grab your firearm, and you make yourself a threat. Yeah. So is Florida, do they have castle laws, stand your ground? And do you know if they they do? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to retreat into a a safe space first in in the state of Florida? No, no. I, I don't know which state, I think Hawaii is one of them, but you have to retreat to a safe space before you even... Yeah. So you basically, if they're not targeting you, they're allowed to take whatever they want from your home. Yeah. The other thing too is, and I think this is every state, if you fire on someone that's running away, you better prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that you felt that they're posing a threat to human life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't just shoot somebody in the back if they're right. running away. <laughs> but if my daughter's room and you're heading in that direction, you better believe I'm going to shoot you in the back. Right. I don't know what yeah. your intentions are. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's fair. We, we're not getting violent, but hey, we're fathers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let, uh, let, let's close it up with the, the, the last question. I guess. So, you deserve, you know, I agree with you on every single thing you said. And I think if we don't approach this social media from a generational standpoint, just in my opinion, why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. Right, because there are people that are invested in us right now. There have been people that have been consistently just hanging out, listening, and watching. If we're not giving people something of value, uh, to mm-hmm. me, value can be laughter. They can learn something, uh, maybe be entertained, but something that they can take away and say, you know what, I appreciate what Carlos did today. I appreciate him sharing his heart, and I appreciate Greg, um, you know, flexing on his Marine Corps shorts in the beginning. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I appreciate that. But from a generational standpoint, as fathers, I will say I agree with you 100%. I want my kids. Say it again. No, I was going to say that uh, a few months ago, I took an assessment to find find a a path for me where where somewhere I would thrive. And it, it came to the conclusion that my mission, something that I would do very well on my mission is to influence. And I think social media offers me that opportunity. Yep. Some careers that go with it is coaching. Some careers that go with it is writing. Uh, careers that go with it is politics. Now, which one am I going to pick? I, like I said, I'm not sure. I, coaching draws my attention. I feel like I have something to offer. But I just heard it recently in a on another podcast. Um, legacy uh, is not what you leave is who you leave it in. So 
basically my kids are going to be my legacy. You know, what am I, what values am I instilling in them? So I, my, my goal, my, my, my goal is to influence them the best that I can so that they can thrive in this world. And now that I'm, I'm growing is on social media. My goal is to hopefully encourage and, and influence people so that they can, um, you know, take advantage of their opportunities or, or whatever it may be. I got to add another question and I'm going to, I'm going to answer the question too. So who is Carlos? Who is Carlos? Not who do you want Carlos to be? Well, who? Carlos is a, it's, he's a natural, natural born leader. Um, I noticed that at a very young age, he's somebody that can fall into the trap of pride. I can be proud, proudful, prideful at times. Uh, I am somebody that is humble. Carlos is somebody that is humble. And I am somebody that fears the Lord. And I am somebody that is proud of my family and proud of the country that I live in. So I guess those are some of the things that I, I want to be somebody that's compassionate and somebody that uh, gives more than he takes. I will tell you this. Um, you are a great man. You're, uh, from what I gather, you're a great husband. You're a great father. You. Um, you've done well. And I think in this season, what I believe in, just something God put in my heart just to share with you is that in your journey and in, in my journey and our journey, there's going to be a lot of opportunities placed in front of us that are going to be seasons of things that we do, not to just show the world who we are, but what I believe that God has placed us in this chapter, in this season of our life to influence the generations. And I see that in you, and I appreciate it. I appreciate that in you, and I, I, I'm not saying this from a place of elevated stance, but one as the same level as you. But I'm very proud of you, Carlos. I really am, and I'm very um, honored and blessed to be able to do this today. Um, super proud of you, and I'm excited, bro, to see what God's going to do in your life. And I'm excited to see what I, I will tell people that are going to watch the replay, like. We're not identified by the things we're due. It's 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 like what I said about LeBron James and Michael Jordan. You know, we asked I asked my kids who's LeBron James. There was always a basketball player. I said, Well, who's Michael Jordan? Oh, he was a basketball player. I said, No, those are the things that they did. That's yeah. not who they are. And I, I say the same thing about you and I, Carlos. Even though you've done amazing things, you and I are not defined by the things that we do. We're defined by who God says we are. Mm -hmm. and the call yeah. the calling you have in your life and i'm so excited bro to be writing some chapters and i know you're going to be in some of the chapters next year uh in my book so brother i love you appreciate love you, you. and uh, i'm excited found me if you're not following carlos t uh his username is actually at carlos underscore fl which stands for florida yeah well. FL for florida yeah uh if you want to follow him on instagram you can follow him there. You can check out all his Daisy Duke shorts that he likes to wear because he's a Marine <laughs> at heart. I, I, I just got back. I just got back to Instagram. I oh. haven't. I haven't been there in a long time, but I. I, I may hop back on. I, I'm promoting his his uh, Marine Corps shorts. If you don't know anything about, I'm telling you, research uh, Marine Corps uh, Marines and their shorts. They love They're called their shorts. skivvies. Skivvies. <laughs> skivvies. Yeah. yeah. When I land the plane, Carlos, it's been a pleasure and an honor. And I'm going to do Thank my fancy know. video. Once we're done, we'll end it. And then I'll just, you and I will be in the back lobby still. And I just want to okay. do my formal, uh, organic, personal goodbyes. And then, so. Okay, okay, okay. Family, yeah. we love you. Thank you for being here. Make sure you follow Carlos at Carlos underscore FL. Man, it's been fun. And I'm learning. You guys are learning. Thank you for being with us on this journey. Also, a very special thanks to Dubby Energy Drinks, who uh, are one of the partners, sponsors of this broadcast. Go to W.GG, buy your energy drinks, and also input GLO, GLO 808 for 10% off your entire order. On behalf of Brother Carlos and myself, we love you guys. God bless you guys. As I always say, much mahalo, and you guys have a blessed evening. Aloha. This is the awkward part where I'm trying to find a video. Where is it? Here we go. All right. See you guys later.